All right, um, let's begin. Uh, we're going to uh, discuss the total station, which we're going to be using for uh, a large component of labs uh, in this course uh, for the semester. Uh, my intention is that this video is uh, relatively short. I just want to go over some basic uh, safety guidelines and some uh, uh, means of operating uh, the device. Um, I'm going to probably break uh, in this video uh, either halfway through or at the end because I've uh, recorded something off to the side where I'm actually showing you the total station and, and giving you uh, some pointers uh, on that. Uh, but to begin, let me go through the device uh, as a whole um, that we're going to be using this semester, um, but also some guidelines about uh, safely operating the total station uh, as a whole. Uh, so we've already used the total station uh, before in class, but just to make sure um, uh, that we're all on the same page. So a total station uh, is a device, uh, is probably the primary uh, surveying tool um, uh, used these days, even with the, uh, uh, the incorporation of GPS uh, and whatnot. Uh, I still think uh, you'll, you'll find total stations are, are fairly ubiquitous. Um, uh, its primary means of, of operation is to use a um, laser and a light reflecting prism uh, to measure distances and angles. Uh, and its benefit is that it does that with a very high uh, degree of precision. Uh, most um, total stations can operate uh, without a prism. Uh, sometimes, sometimes that's called a reflectorless mode. Um, uh, you do sometimes sacrifice a little bit of accuracy with that. Um, but it's usually not too bad, uh, and they, uh, again, um, work pretty well. I don't think you'll find most surveyors will use that for something that needs a, a hyper amount of accuracy, like setting property corners uh, and whatnot, um, but uh, uh, it does have that capability. On um, the horizontal, uh, or the, the total station has two means of motion. It can rotate both horizontally and vertically, uh, and it can measure uh, angles uh, that way as well as distances. So it can give you uh, quite a bit uh, of data uh, per measurement. Um, what you need uh, to operate the total station uh, is the total station itself. Uh, you need a tripod uh, and you need a uh, range pole with a prism uh, attached to it. So a typical uh, survey crew will need uh, at least two people. Um, uh, one who can operate the total station and one who can operate uh, the, the prism rod. And there, there are robotic total stations and whatnot that can even uh, eliminate that uh, uh, feature where um, you, you can uh, 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 do it with one person, but those are usually uh, a little pricier and, and whatnot. Um, a couple of precautions uh, with utilizing the total station. Um, first off, um, uh, you want to make sure that you are uh, holding the total station by the handle when you're transporting it. And I do want to say a note uh, on that. Um, I'm an advocate that whenever you're moving the total station that primarily you should be doing it inside the case, that you take the total station, put it in the case, and then transmit from point to point. If you are going to uh, uh, transmit it, make sure you're doing it by the handle that's on top. Never hold the total station by the lens barrel or anything like that because that can affect the, uh, um, the, the mechanism inside and reduce uh, accuracy. Um, you, you shouldn't really be exposing the total station without a filter to direct sunlight, um, and you really shouldn't need to uh, for most operation because really you're just trying to sight the, um, uh, the, the point, but never leave it out uh, in the sun too long uh, as it can damage the components inside the instrument. Um, don't leave the, the, uh, the, the instrument in high temperature uh, for a long uh, period of time because uh, it will reduce the service life. Uh, and that's usually not a concern if you're maintaining proper procedures. Um, again, putting it in the case uh, and storing it when, uh, when done. Um, if, uh, if, you if you need uh, a high degree of precision for a, a, uh, for, for a given measurement, um, try and provide shade against the direct uh, sunlight that can, uh, that can uh, improve your, your, the accuracy of your measurements. Um, one thing to, to watch out for whenever you're, you have a sudden change uh, in temperature to the instrument, that can result in uh, accuracy issues or a reduction of the, the distance that you can shoot. So a good example of that would be um, if you are going to a job site and you're taking the instrument from the vehicle outside and let's say it's really, really cold outside, that can be a sudden uh, change in temperature. Um, whenever you're opening the case to take out the instrument, place the case horizontally on the ground and open it uh, like so. Uh, don't sit it and open it like this because the instrument can fall out uh, of its housing inside the case. So make sure you're sitting it 
flat to where the handle is facing you, open it, and then open it like that so that when it, you open it, you open it flat. Um, uh, if you need to wipe off the lens, the case uh, should come with a, uh, a cloth inside. Make sure that you're only using that cloth. You don't want to scratch the surface of the lens. Um, I don't really think that's too, too necessary uh, for our uh, labs. I, I, we've never really had a major need for that um, uh, in class, so unless it's absolutely necessary, let, let's try and avoid that. Um, whenever you're to uh, transporting the total station, uh, again, I think that the primary means you should do it is in the case. Um, if you're going to transmit the total station, I like carrying it by the handle. I've got these two images here on the uh, right. Um, the one in the middle is sort of accepted, but I don't really like doing that. I like just transporting it in the case because that's what it's built for. And I definitely don't want to see anybody doing uh, what's going on uh, on the right. Um, and uh, um, one thing, uh, so one thing I do want to mention is that um, while I'm hoping we really don't have to deal with this too much this semester in this course, uh, in the real world, you know, when you're uh, taking surveying measurements, you're doing it outdoors, which means there is the potential for uh, rain. Um, make sure that you keep the, so a couple things, make sure you keep the case closed after removing moving the total station for use in the field. Uh, you don't want to collect, uh, if it's a humid day, you don't want to collect excess moisture, excess debris inside the case. Um, make sure that you remove uh, any uh, debris from the case um, prior to storage. So if you're out in the field and there's leaves or grass uh, that gets stuck in the case, take those out. Um, they may not cause a problem that day, but over time that organic material will degrade, it will um, uh, uh, chip apart, and that grass and those leaves will turn into a powder that can actually cause more damage than moisture. So you want to make sure that your case uh, is clean. Uh, if you got a lot of um, debris in the case, uh, we would want to take all that out and we might even get a, a small vacuum cleaner to remove that material. That's very, very important. Um, if we ever get caught uh, in rain, um, so make sure that the um, instrument is dry before it's put in the case. Never put a wet instrument uh, in the case. Uh, and if the case itself gets wet, make sure that you're, you're, you're draining that, that water out. So again, we just want to make sure that we try and keep the device uh, as dry as possible. Um, if there was any surveyors that happened to be um, uh, watching this video, maybe I should have provided a trigger warning for this case because I imagine if there are any surveyors watching, some of them sort of winced uh, at this image. This is a, this better not happen <laughs> in this class. Um, these total stations are incredibly expensive devices. Each one, uh, dependent upon the features, uh, can go from you know, $10,000 all the way up to $50,000, $60,000. The ones that we use for our program are about, I think if we wanted to buy them new, are probably about $16,000 a piece. Um, so they're incredibly sensitive and incredibly um, uh, expensive pieces of device or pieces of equipment that both you and future students need to use. So this better not, uh, I'll just say this better not happen. Let's, let's, let's uh, treat our, our instruments with care and respect. Um, let's get into operation uh, of the device. Um, uh, what I'm going to do uh, in this uh, series of slides is, is talk a little bit about the, um, the, um, the modes of operation itself. Uh, I'm going to take a, a I'm going to pause this part of the video and go to my um, uh, uh, recording of using the device and then we'll get into the, uh, the um, the, the, the operations of the interface. So with that, let's head over to this next video. So I wanted to say a few words about the total station that we're going to be using uh, in class this semester, but also give you some pointers on some other uh, total stations that you might be using uh, throughout your career. Um, so here's the uh, one of the total stations uh, that we'll be using in CE241. This is a Leica a TS-06. Um, and for the most part, total stations uh, have a, a general way of operating and they, uh, for the most part, all operate the same way. Um, but there's a couple of uh, pointers uh, and tips and whatnot that I wanted to uh, mention uh, right here on the onset. So first off, uh, regarding transportation, uh, I'm a big advocate for when you're moving your total station to place it in the case uh, and then move it. Um, I think that it, uh, 
um, that, that leads to um, the, the, the longest uh, life possible for the device. Uh, these devices are uh, fairly expensive. Um, if you are going to uh, transport it though outside the case, my advice is to transport it with the handle. Uh, if you're gonna do that though, um, uh, if you look here on the device, uh, let's see, that's probably the easiest way to see it. Um, sometimes the uh, handles on top can uh, attach with these sort of screws right here. So what I'll do is I'll loosen it a bit. You can see that the handle uh, might be a little loose. Um, so if you pick it up, you can see that it might be a little loose. Um, so my, uh, just make sure that you check this screw to, to make sure that it's tight so that when you pick it up, uh, it, it's uh, uh, securely connected to the device. Um, okay, so a couple other things um, worth mentioning. Um, so whenever you set the device up, uh, whenever you're, you're utilizing a total station, it's common to get the device level. Um, the, not only but not only does it need to be level, but it needs to be level over a, a specific point. Um, and there are um, two means that, that total stations uh, achieve this, um, and both of those are centered around this component right here. This is what's called a tribrock, and this is what mounts the total station to the tripod. The tribrock uh, tri also contains the, uh, the leveling screws that you use for the fine adjustment of the leveling of your device. So a couple things, um, whenever you uh, uh, begin your setup, um, if you'll see here, these three leveling screws, they have a, a degree of travel to them. So you can see as you uh, adjust them and whatnot, they can go sort of all the way one, you know, all the way in one direction or all the way in the other. And the middle of the travel is usually set by a guideline that you can see here on the, um, the silver component uh, of the piston. And usually you want your leveling screw set uh, to where that's in the middle. So that as you begin your setup, you have a fair amount of travel on your screws, both uh, up and down. You, uh, it, it can be kind of frustrating when you're beginning a setup and then uh, as soon as you begin leveling, you find out you've run out of room because you're, you're at the end of the, uh, uh, the travel on the, the leveling screw. So before you place the total station on the uh, tripod, make sure that you set it up to where the, uh, the leveling screws are about in the middle. That'll, that'll make for the, the easiest uh, setup. Now, um, again, the, the goal is to get the total station level and usually over a, a, a known point of interest. Uh, and the tribrock is the device that helps you do that. And there are two primary classes of tribrocks. The first is this one right here. This is an optical tribrock. So if you look here, you can see that on this end of the tribrock, there is a little scope right here. And the idea is that as you uh, are you've got the device set up on the um, uh, uh, on the tripod and as you are setting up the device you can actually look through here and there's a little um, eyepiece right here and you can look and you can see there's a little target uh, and then as you set it up you can set it up such that it is level uh, and over that given point this is an optical plummet um, that's what you can see here this is from a topcon device um, this device uses a laser plummet and so if i navigate to the um to the leveling screen here. Let me uh, navigate to that. Uh, if you navigate to this, you can see that I'm gonna pick this up. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that here on my finger, but there's actually a laser pointer here uh, that will point um, down to the ground. Um, sometimes on a bright day, uh, you might wanna make sure that the, um, the intensity of the laser is driven up a little higher so you can actually see that. Um, uh, and, and we'll go through that in the notes uh, here in a second, but I just wanted to point out the, the two modes uh, of operation. Um, and the nice thing about most total stations is they're, they're usually pretty universal in the uh, hardware that they use. So for example, you usually should be able to switch between um, one tribrock or another. So if you look here on the total station, let me find it right here so I can face it to the camera. Uh, on the tribrock right here, there is a little locking mechanism. And so what I'll show you is we'll take this and we will turn the locking mechanism. So what I'm doing, I'm taking that locking mechanism and turning it like that. And so what you can do is unlock it and then the total station can come off the tribrock and then you can just place it on another tribrock and it'll just lock right in. Okay, um, I don't really recommend doing that in the field all that often. Uh, most of the time you've got it set up with either a laser uh, plummet or an op optical uh, plummet, uh, and you really don't need to uh, mess with that very much in the field. But just know that uh, for the most part, uh, total stations usually are pretty universal in terms of switching that component out. Let me get this back on its um, factory um, tribrock, not its aftermarket. So we'll set this over here. 
Okay, so um, a couple of other things worth mentioning uh, with the total station are um, it, once you've got it level is actually just its, um, its operation. Um, most total stations are gonna be set up with um, uh, keyboards on either side. So you can see there's a, a, an interface here and an interface here, uh, and they're usually just exact opposites of one another. So, um, you know, for me, I like setting up my total station to where I have the horizontal adjustment uh, uh, governed by my right hand and then my vertical adjusted by my left hand. But if you wanted to flip that, you could just, you know, uh, uh, flip that in that fashion. Um, just make sure that you're um, reading your, your angles and whatnot properly. But this is, this is sort of the default uh, uh, um, that you have your horizontal uh, over here on the right. Um, a couple of other things uh, worth mentioning. So um, whenever you uh, utilize a total station, this, this one uh, has one right here. Most total stations will have a rough sight uh, here on the top. So for example, if you've got your setup and you're trying to sight in on someone holding the rod, 300 you know feet this way um, instead of trying to seek them out uh, in the eyepiece that can be kind of difficult you have this um, this rough site right here if you look through this rough site you will usually see a, um, a crosshair or a target or uh, some sort of cursor that will help you roughly locate uh, somebody so I'll find a, a point here in the office uh, so let's say this point right here so, so what I can do is I can use this um, this rough sight as a means of getting pretty close uh, to the point in question and now that I'm for the most part pretty close I can now uh, go into the site um, and use my horizontal and vertical fine adjustment to, to find the point um, this device does not have a locking mechanism for horizontal and vertical adjustment, but some do. Uh, so for example, you're, you're moving your device, you're getting it where you want, um, but if you want to get into horizontal and vertical fine adjustment, what'll happen is the, um, the horizontal and vertical adjustment will have a lock, so that you can lock that in place and then begin your uh, fine adjustment here. This device does not have one, but some total stations might. Uh, so just make sure that you're um, aware of that as you uh, as you utilize the device. Um, another uh, thing that's worth mentioning for for first timers is the focus. Um, so here I've got the total station sort of focused like or turned like this, uh, and here's the um, the the eyepiece where you uh, you know sight your 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 rod person. And there's two different focuses. This is sometimes. Uh, um, uh, uh, not obvious to, to folks using the, the total station for the first time. So this one has a bigger knob. Let me do this like this. So there's a bigger knob right here and there's a smaller knob right here. So the bigger knob is the optical focus for sighting in the rod person and the surrounding environment. But this smaller one is for sharpening or tightening the crosshairs, the actual wires that you're seeing for sighting in. Um, I'm somebody that has a, a, a fairly strong uh, prescription um, uh, in, in my glasses, but um, I can uh, focus both the, um, the, the uh, optics and the crosshair uh, to, 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 to perfect clarity, uh, and you should be able to as well. So make sure that you're, you're um, taking into account uh, both of them. Um, this device also, and this is common among total stations, has a, uh, a mark for indicating the height of the instrument. So on either side of the total station here uh, and here, uh, it's somewhat innocuous, but you will see a small little target uh, right here. And I have a, um, a more clear view uh, in the slides, but there's a little line right here and a little dot. That little dot right there, and there's a dot here and there's a dot here, indicates the exact height of the instrument when you're beginning uh, your setup. So for instance, if you're trying to record the height of the instrument for your field notes or for the uh, device, you'll go from the ground to that point, to this point right here. And that's the point uh, from which you'll, you'll measure the height of the instrument. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I believe that the only other um, piece of advice worth mentioning with this device is um, there are multiple modes and there are multiple ways of setting this up, but it is common for devices to have a, um, a, a sort of quick means of taking a measurement. Um, this device does, uh, dependent upon your mode, this button right here, this large button right here can be used um, to, to take uh, a, a, a measurement, but if you're in the quick survey mode, you can just click the measurement button right here and it will begin to take the measurement. 
Now, if you notice here, I'm just here in my office and um, let's see if it takes a measurement. It might, it might not. Um, it might be because I'm, I'm sort of faced on a somewhat uh, ref, uh, reflectorless um, site. Let's see if I can cite something that's a little more um, non-reflective. Let's give this a shot. Most, um, most total stations will have a reflectorless option nowadays. So um, it is typical to utilize a, 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 a prism pole to measure, um, to measure your uh, uh, distances and whatnot. But most devices have a, uh, a reflectorless option where you can actually take distances um, from, the, uh, uh, from the device. I, um, I don't have this one set to, uh, to do reflectorless measurement, uh, but I know this one can and all of our total stations will. Um, we might utilize some reflectorless measurements for our, um, uh, for our topo lab, which we're gonna do later. Um, whenever you're using a uh, total station that has both uh, prism and non-prism uh, distance measuring options, um, uh, you usually sacrifice a bit of accuracy when you're using the reflectorless option, the one without a prism. Um, uh, it's usually not a significant amount, but it's something that you need to be aware of as the surveyor. So uh, as an example, if you're doing a boundary survey on a piece of property, um, let's say it's a city lot, you know, a piece of property uh, in, in a suburban area, uh, and you've located the property corners and you're trying to get a a good idea of where the house is. You can usually cite the corner of that house uh, and that'll work no problem. Um, if your instrument does not have uh, uh, reflectorless uh, capabilities, it's probably an older instrument. Most modern instruments uh, will, will have that uh, capability. Um, and I think that's all for this uh, physical demo. We'll probably get back to the uh, lecture notes now and uh, uh, go through some uh, final items before we close out this video. All right, we're back. Um, so let's go into the um, specifics of operating the device. So I've got here just an image of the total station uh, as a whole. Um, as uh, we mentioned, there, there are keyboards on either side of this total station that um, maintain the same degree of operation. Most total stations now uh, have uh, both of those features. Um, uh, this one, uh, so this came from the user's guide uh, for the total station, which I'm actually going to put on Blackboard so that anybody can download if they'd like to take a look at it. Um, you can see here items A through R. Uh, I've got item S uh, added here. This is the, um, let me uh, hit control L here so you can see my laser pointer. Um, this part right here is the, um, the, the point at which the height of the instrument uh, is located. So you can see that little T uh, shape right here, that point in the middle, that is where the measurements are being taken from, from either side. Um, the instrument has on either side, so on this side, there's the battery case that you can screw out and pop the battery in. Uh, on this side is a, a space for a USB drive. Uh, and we will use that at one point throughout the semester uh, for uh, collecting our topo data for our topo lab that we'll do uh, later on. Uh, the on and off switch for this uh, total station, you have to hold it in. Um, so if you just hit the button and you're like, why isn't it turning on? You have to hold it in uh, for a bit. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned in my uh, demo uh, a second ago that there are two uh, focuses for the, um, the optics, one for uh, uh, focusing the image and one for focusing uh, or for sharpening the crosshairs. Uh, so make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, if I look here on the left, we've got horizontal fine adjustment and we've got vertical fine adjustment uh, over here. So this, or they're, they're calling it vertical drive uh, and horizontal drive. Uh, either one means the same. Um, this is a view of the, uh, the, the, the keyboard with a little bit more detail. Um, so we've got our numeric uh, uh, keyboard, you know, alphanumerics for entering text and numerical values uh, here. Um, a couple things worth pointing out. So this F1 through F4, these yellow buttons are assigned to the um, keys that you see here. So this is the quick survey mode. So this is just taking a measurement. So if you hit the all uh, button, the F1, that will uh, uh, trigger the total station to take a measurement. Um, a couple of things uh, though that are worth mentioning. So for example, if you go into um, these four gray buttons here on the um, left, so this button here up top uh, uh, is called the page key. 
So for example, where it says quick survey here and it says one out of three, so there's three pages on this menu. So if you hit this page button, it will cycle through you know, page one, page two, and page three, and there'll be different pieces of information shown on the total station. So if you need to cycle through pages, you use this button, not the navigation key. I think your first instinct might be to use the up and down arrows to go from page to page, but no, you use this page button. Uh, this FNC, here, uh, FNC key right here uh, is meant to uh, access some basic functions of the, uh, the total station. So, for example, you can press the function key to go to the leveling and laser screen for doing your, your leveling adjustment if it doesn't automatically uh, show up uh, on the uh, total station or if you're turning on the total station and you accidentally hit OK and you're like, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't level it. Instead of turning it off and turning it back on, you can bring that screen uh, up here. Um, our total stations have a wide uh, a range of functionality. We're not going to need to use uh, all of them. Uh, what, uh, most of what we're going to do uh, in class is going to be through quick survey. Um, we might uh, see some uh, use in our stakeouts. Uh, uh, we're going to have a lab where we're going to stake out a horizontal curve, um, and we are going to be doing uh, some topo uh, work as well. So we'll be exporting data collected inside the total station uh, for uh, use uh, in later jobs. And, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds uh, with that because as we get to those uh, labs, we have some specific detailed instructions on that. But just know that, the, that your total station has a, a fair amount of, of functionality inside it to be able to do coordinate geometry or COGO or um, traversing uh, and things like that. There's a lot of uh, really neat uh, features that a lot of these devices have. Um, Here's some of the technical specifications uh, on the document, and uh, some of this is uh, probably a little bit um, uh, 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 vague from an understanding standpoint right now, but I'll, I'll give you some clarity here in a bit. Um, but this comes directly from the user's manual. So our device has an angle accuracy uh, anywhere from two to five seconds. So whenever you take uh, an angular measurement, you can uh, be assured that the accuracy is within that, that range. And I'll give you some distance uh, uh, analogies with that uh, here in a bit. Um, uh, as mentioned, the uh, the total station can measure both uh, with a reflector and without a reflector. If you're using a reflector, um, you can get an accuracy uh, to essentially within 0 0.0049 feet or so many parts uh, per million. Um, so without a prism, that distance range uh, uh, um, drops down a bit and the accuracy drops down a bit. But again, these, these ranges and accuracies are incredibly uh, uh, tight, uh, uh, especially when you, you know, compare it against uh, taping or pacing or something like that. Um, now, uh, with this uh, angle accuracy measurement, I thought I'd give you some context. So I'm going to go back to basic geometry. So if you have a... Um, a circular uh, uh, arc. Let's say you have this this uh, arc right here. So let's say um, to to re relate it to the total station. Let's say you're talking about a, a segment of a circle. So R the radius is the distance from the instrument to the to the point in question, and the angle is let's say how far you turn the um, uh, turn the device. So from let's say from point A to point B. So let's say you're set up here and you take a measurement and turn and then take another measurement. And let's just say S is the, um, or sorry, theta is the angle that you measure between those two, uh, um, uh, those two uh, shots. So to give you kind of an idea on error, so let's say that um, you had um, one minute of an angle. That one minute of an angle corresponds to, you can do the math, this is just some basic trig, corresponds to about 0 0.03 feet um, of arc length uh, if the radius was 100 feet. And if you had one second, that would be one foot of arc length at 40 miles of, of a shot. So, you know, think about the scale. And then we're talking about an instrument that's accurate to within two to five seconds. So that's, we're talking about some incredible uh, accuracy here. So two seconds of an angle is about a thousandth of a feet at, uh, of arc length at a hundred feet of distance. So we're talking about, you know, the total station being a hundred foot away and that angle being, you know, within that much. That, that, that's, that's a, a high degree of, of accuracy for the device. 
Um, whenever you're using the the total station, so the the, the one that we use has a, a legend for the distances that it measures, and so if, whenever you see the the right triangle um, uh, uh, schematic on the screen, so I'm going to go back a couple slides, um, so you can see right here. So for example, on the quick survey screen, so you can see point ID HR is the height of the rod. We have the code. The code is what you would. Um, define the point as, and we'll talk about coding of points when we get into our topo lab later. We have the uh, you know, horizontal and vertical, but then there's this, this image here right here, and we have this triangular uh, image right here, and the line here is on the bottom of the triangle. That line on the bottom of the triangle is indicating that that distance, which is shown here is 25.103 meters, that distance is a horizontal distance. Now, whenever you take a measurement, the total station will take all the measurements. It will take a horizontal distance, a vertical distance, and a slope distance. Uh, and it will um, record all of those when you do a, a quick survey shot. It will just need to, you know, you'll need to go to different pages uh, to view that. Um, one of the things that the total station can do is it can compute the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the point that you have shot just using some basic trig and it can relate that to the X, Y, and Z coordinate of where the total station is. Now uh, in surveying we have a name for that we don't use X, Y, and Z we call um, the X instead of X and Y we call that easting and northing just to re relate that to cardinal directions and we end up just using height for height of the instrument. Um, so we have like an E knot, an N knot, and an H knot, which would be the easting, northing, and height of the total station, and then an E N and H, which is the easting, northing, and height of whatever point uh, that we're measuring. Um, and so the total station can measure all of that. It can also measure the horizontal angle and the vertical angle uh, as well. Um, so whenever you go through, again, like I said, there's that page button on the total station. Whenever you go through that, there's three different pages. So we can, we've got, for example, here's the um, uh, the height of the rod. Here we've got the horizontal angle, the vertical angle, and we've got the horizontal distance, slope distance, uh, and vertical distance. And then it will also uh, compute the uh, easting, northing, and height of the, the point uh, in question. So again, we can log all of that uh, and convert that into data for an AutoCAD drawing. Uh, and we will do that uh, a little bit later this semester. Um, whenever you're setting up the total station, um, we uh, our, our main goal is to set it up to where the total station is completely level and hovered over uh, a, a point in question. Um, now, uh, most total stations will have uh, either a means of locating over a point using a laser plummet or an optical plummet. The ones that we use uh, in this class have a laser plummet. Um, and all that is is just uh, uh, um, the, the device that will point uh, over the uh, a turning point of the benchmark or whatever control you're, you're setting up over. Um, this is the leveling screen on our total station. So this total station is kind of nice that it actually has a, um, a, 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 a screen interface for leveling the device. And remember, you screw the two uh, screws uh, um, in opposite directions and the bubble follows your left thumb. Well, on our total station, there's actually a screen interface that that bubble will move uh, left and right or up and down depending upon what screen you're looking at. But once you get check marks on all three, the, the device is perfectly leveled. If you look over here on the right, there is a uh, this sort of this, this screen right here. This is indicating the intensity of the laser, the laser that's shooting down and um, uh, 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 pointing towards the point in question. If you hit the up and down key, you can increase the intensity of that laser to make it a little easier uh, to see. Um, now, one of the things we are going to discuss uh, this semester um, when we get, uh, and specifically when we get into our uh, topo lab, uh, is establishing a coordinate system using control points. Um, and I'll show you, we've got several control points um, established over campus. We've got some in Gullickson Field, some in Buskirk Field, and then even some uh, in the front of Old Main, uh, between Old Main uh, and Hal Greer. Um, I've got here on this screen, um, if you notice, so these are the control points that we've got. So, and this table is showing, you know, I've got control points 10, 11, 12, uh, and 13. And these are just nails uh, that have been uh, uh, inset into the concrete. Um, what I've got here for each of these are um, X, Y, uh, and Z coordinates, um, but we're calling those northings and eastings uh, and heights. For each of these um, uh, um, 
for each of these control points so we can use these to um, uh, uh, begin our survey. Um, now, um, this won't really mean a whole lot right now, but if, if you notice these, so I've got coordinates for each of these uh, points. These are permanent points on campus where the coordinates are known. Right now I'm referencing these off of an arbitrary coordinate system. So for instance, CP13, I've got the coordinates are 5,000, 5,000. Um, what you will see, and, I, and I'll post this to uh, uh, Blackboard as we get uh, closer to this point, I actually have these coordinates also mapped to a state plane coordinate system. We haven't spoken about state plane coordinates, uh, but we will a little later. But the long story short is those are tied into a common coordinate system that references um, a, a common origin for the, the state of West Virginia. Uh, and we have those uh, coordinates uh, located as, uh, as well. Now, um, um, one of the things uh, that, uh, one of the other options that you can uh, perform with the total station is what's called a resection. Uh, and so the idea is if you have um, multiple control points that you have, so what we will do um, in our lab is, so we've got, let's say, four control points here set up. What we'll do is we can shoot each of those control points, um, and then we, we can use the 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 measurements that we're taking for those so let's say you know just to keep the the math kind of simple let's say i have two control points and i know what the coordinates are so i've got control point one that has coordinates of 100 comma zero and i have control point two which has coordinates of zero comma zero how would i determine the coordinates of the total station well it's really just trig you know so you can just set up anywhere on some unknown point um, enter the coordinates of your first control point and then measure it. Then enter the coordinates of your second control point, measure that, and then the total station just solves for its own position just using some, some basic trig. And that process is called a resection. Um, the total station you know, can do that uh, as well, as well as uh, some other things, uh, other operations obviously as well. Um, and so we will use that uh, throughout the semester. Our topo lab this semester, uh, which we'll get to later, is actually focused on Buskirk Field. We'll do a topographic map of this, and we'll also focus on this area hill, or this area right here, because it's really the only place on campus that has a pronounced hill uh, that's easy to access. So uh, Marshall University's campus is really flat, and in order to generate a topographic map, uh, we kind of need one, uh, need you know a little bit of relief in the land. Um, so that's really all I wanted to say uh, about the uh, the total station, and I'll, I'll paste in this video um, uh, here as well. I will probably um, post a very, very short quiz on Blackboard. It won't be timed, uh, and you'll be able to stop and start it, but the idea is so that you can watch this video and then answer a couple questions about uh, some of the things that I've mentioned to make sure everybody's uh, following along. Uh, and with that, that's all I have, and I will see you uh, when we come back uh, to class.